high. And here is the thing many Zoom fans on YouTube are looking and hoping for. The Zoom petition. As many of you know, in 2004, due to rating drops, the revival of the famous 70s show Zoom was canceled with its final season premiering in 2005. Zoom was loved by many people. A couple years before its cancellation was announced, many people said they couldn't find the show. In fact, similar to the director's cut of Thomas and the Magic Railroad, there is another story to be told behind the rating drops and the overall cancellation of Zoom. My hope is to have Zoom fans recognize this fact to be revealed in this video and to have them sign this petition in the form of a video response. For any of you who aren't familiar with the show Zoom, it premiered in 1972 with the cast of seven kids who perform skits, do crafts, play games, and a lot more all sent in by television viewers. In 1999, it was revived with the addition of science experiments that could be sent in. The theme song of Season 2 of the revived edition will be seen later in the video. At the time I am writing the script, there are 39 people who have viewed my interview about the transition from Zoom to Fetch with Ruff Huffman. One of the questions was, When did you first notice the rating drops? Unfortunately, they didn't answer to my question, which is actually the heart of this petition. However, from a fact from a now deleted news article, I do know the answer. Little did I know, but a generalization can be made from two news articles forming the correct answer. In a Boston Globe news article called Children's Show Zoom, a victim of ratings drops, has a, a quote from Kate Taylor, the executive producer of Zoom, and now Fetch, which says the viewership for everything has dropped for all of public television. Zoom wasn't getting the real estate it had in the first years. But how much did the ratings fall for kids shows on PBS? In, in another news article from current.org, a, pu a public broadcasting based news group has one and has a graph in one of the articles from Nielsen's readings from PBS from the PBS Kids time slot. Now, don't let the age group on the graph fool you. It, if you look at the bottom of the graph, it says the time from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. that these ratings were, were taken from. Not only does it draw the conclusion that it must have occurred in 2002. But the time slot includes the PBS Kids Go Block, a block that includes Zoom and Fetch. And even before it launched, shouldn't the 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. include most shows aimed for 
need to resume on PBS? Many of us would think so, but once, but, but think again once the, the surprising fact is revealed. WGBH, the the producers of Zoom, and now Fetch that it was the viewers who caused the rating drops. Look at Kate Taylor's quote again, for example. I wouldn't blame them because it's common sense to think that. But the truth is, it wasn't the viewers' fault at all. It was really the fault of the stations. If you take a look above Kate's quote, you see a person at WGBH tell the Boston Globe that meant that many PBS stations are covered with with many shows that go into the after school time slot. And are choosing to run Zoom at less desirable times. In another news article from Tampa Bay, a Floridian says that the two PB that the PBS stations in the area. And haven't broadcast in it for two years. This is just off of the live web. But what about the web as it was in the past? If I had a time machine, we could go back in time and show you the past web. However, I don't have one. But that doesn't mean that we can't see the web as it was in the past. Um, there is a cool website I just go called the Internet Archive Wayback Machine. The Internet Archive has been taking websites that shots by robots or crawlers since 1996. That is three years before the revived version of Zoom even premiered. For more information about this, please check out their frequently asked questions or contact them at info at archive.org. However, I will show you two examples, first from the live web and then from the Internet Archive Wayback Machine. First, I'm going to show you Google. Here's Google as it is from the live web. Now, as we go into the Wayback Machine, And let's click number 11. And here's Google as it was in 1998. So this is Google now. This is Google as it was in 1998. Now I am going to show you YouTube. Last time I had problems with my browser accessing the website. It might just be a temporary glitch. First I'll sign out so you can actually see what it looks like when you first log in. This is what it looks like now. And now as we head back to the Wayback Machine Let's view it as it was on April 20th, 2005. That, that, that looks 
a little bit different. The logo hasn't changed much. 